Hey, yo, everyone. Now I will be explaining solutions to Corpus round 616. So I already have some notes, but don't worry about that. So not to make it too long, to make it short, uh, I wouldn't be explaining problem statements. So if you don't know, if you didn't read some problems, just go just go to course round 660 and read the problem statements. Okay. So in this problem, let's uh, let's try for which numbers we can't um, find answer. So let's find three smallest first three smallest. Um, that was nearly prime numbers. So these are 6, 10, 14. Well, well we know that if, as it, if these are three smallest nearly prime numbers, then we can add one, and this will be the smallest number which we can represent, which will be equal to 31. So which means that all numbers that is less than 31, doesn't have answer. So for all n that is small smaller than less sorry smaller than 31 answer is no. Okay, then maybe you can think that okay, let's try to print the answer in such form like 6, 10, 14, and n minus 30. So n minus 30 is because here is sum is equal to 30. Well, that is actually good, but sometimes it does work. Uh, actually, it does work when n is equal to 36, 40, or 244. Because in these cases, this number will be equal to uh, this number will be equal to 6 or 10 or 14. So, but we want to have four different numbers. Well, for these test cases, when n equal to one of these numbers, you can try to solve. And try to use another strategy. Well, instead of 14, you can use another nearly prime number as 15. So, and in this case, uh, it works. So, for all numbers that are, that are not equal to 30, 36, 40, and 44, you can use this strategy. For, for these numbers, you can use this strategy. This one. And that is, that's it. Okay, let's go to problem B. Okay. So here I have notes as well. Well, in this problem, you can notice that uh, it's always optimal to use eight or nine to print answer that looks like that that consists only nines and eights. Well, it's optimal only because uh, all numbers that are less than eight and uh, nine has less digits in binary representation. So so by using eight and nine, you just you only you only increase the final number. Okay. So let's look at some examples. So for example, when n is equal to 3, optimal answer is uh, 998. And in binary presentation, it will look like, like that. So it's, actually, it's not actually binary rep representation of this number. It's a concatenation of binary representation of each digit. So it is nine, nine and eight. Yeah. Okay. So, and we want to have this number as small as possible. Thus, it's not. It's, uh, thus, even if results for nine and for eight, if it was last digit, it will be the same. So it's it's better to use eight because by using eight, we minim minimize this number, but the result, but the result is, is the same. 
โอเคอืมฮึ so maybe let's try to uh to see another example maybe when n is equal to four well when n is equal to four uh optimal answer is nine 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 and eight because because it delete last four numbers sorry digits um then it's better to use eight not not nine okay now maybe you're thinking that it's always optimal to use uh nine nights at the prefix and eight at the suffix that is actually correct so to make sure let's try another example maybe let's say when n was five then we will delete this number as well this digit so because now if you if you can like if you put uh, if you put eight, that will give the same result. So it's um, more optimal to use eight instead of, instead of nine. Okay. So from from this point, you can uh, you can notice that you will delete last n divided by by four digits. Sorry, uh, not divide, divide and delete. You will. Uh, print n divided by 4, 8 at the end. But to be more precise, it will be n divided by 4 rounded, rounded up. Because here, when n was 5, you delete this digit, and then you can replace this number with 8, even if you delete one more digit. Okay. Mm. So if you know th that this is an amount of eights at the end, then you can just print that many nights at the beginning, and at the end you can print just that many uh, eights. Yeah, that's actually it. So let's go to problem C. Okay, so in this problem, mm, we are given some data and we need to check if that's data correct or, or not. So in the graph which we uh, which we were given, which is, so which is actually three, uh, let's denote such such thing as size of three, which just number of people that live in this this subtree. For example, uh, size of three will be just number of people that live in this subtree. Okay. Um, so let's find some conditions that has to be that have to be held in order uh, to in order that in order if we want to have yes what one to print yeah if in order I mean sorry in case if answer is yes okay. So first of all, I guess it's easy to notice that we need to have, I mean, in, in, in node V, you have at least that many uh, people. Now this is absolute happiness index. So for sure you have at least that many uh, people living in this subtree. Well, if this number is greater than the size of V, the for sure answer is no. Well, which means that this condition has to be held. So number of people has to be uh, greater or equal to happiness index of node V. Okay, second. Um, secondly, let's denote X as number of happy people and number and why as number of unhappy people in this uh, subtree? Well, we know that x minus y is just happiness, happiness index of node v, and also we know that x plus y is the total amount of people in uh, in in a node v. So this will be just so now we can see that this 
uh, a system of equations, I guess that's its name. Well, then we can just add up these two things and that will be just equal to 2x, uh, yeah, equal to everything of b plus, plus size of b. Well, then we can just divide it by 2 and find out what x equal to. What, what, x, equal to, what x equal to 2. Okay, funny. Well, so since x is integer, so x has to be divisible by 2. So, yeah, so this is our new condition. So, x in node v has to be divisible by 2. Yeah, so this is our second condition. Well, okay, so if you know how many happy people we have in the subtree, uh, subtree of v, not v, well, we also can like, understand that this, that number of happy people shouldn't exceed total number of people in this subtree, and this number has to be at least zero. Well, so this is equal to x. So this is our third condition. And lastly, okay, let's suppose we are at node v. So let's say if x is a number of, uh, let's say x, x of v, if or x of v is a number of uh, happy people in subtree of v. So, so this number, so this number has to be greater or equal to to total amount of happy people in in each subtree of node v, right? Yeah. So this is our last condition, and actually, it is sufficient to 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 determine if answer exists or not, if answer is yes or no. Okay. So you can actually do uh, you can actually like do that with DFS. You can just traverse graph like recursively and compute size of v for each node for each subtree. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go to problem D. Well, well, in this problem. Problem D, we always have, like if you perform operation, like if you perform operation on uh, number i, you will need to add uh, a certain um, number to to element in place b i. Well, which means that for for each um, for each number. Or for in, for each index, you have at most one another like index or position where you will add current number. So when when you have okay, let's think of this problem as a as a graph. Well, when you have from each node at most one edge, it will like uh, it will look like well, actually it's called I guess um, functional graph if I'm not mistaken. So it always look like mm, like that. So you will you will have cycles and uh, for each, and all nodes will go to cycle. Yeah, so you will have such graph. You will have you will have such graph where all nodes. Like where you have only one cycle and almost goes to cycle. Well, but but in problem statement you are guaranteed that this sequence uh, doesn't form a cycle, which is uh, I guess helpful. Well, if this thing doesn't, uh, I mean, if we don't have cycles, this will be a tree. 
Uh, but to be more precise, it's not it's not a one tree, it's a set of trees. So you might have several trees. Well, obviously, if you have several trees, answer for uh, for each tree doesn't depend on another tree. So, so which means that you can try uh, to solve for each tree independently. Okay, so now let's just uh, try to come up with a solution for a single tree. Well, let's go here. So let's here denote uh, DNA programming. Let's use DNA programming and uh, let's um, let's denote the PV as maximum number you can get for for number for node V. Well, initially the PV equal to uh, to the current number, right? Uh, like to the initial number. Well, and then, for example, sometimes uh, we can <clears throat> we can perform operation on 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 subtree of V, and by doing that, we might increase number in node V. Okay. Now let's consider node V and a certain node two. This in this subtree. Uh, yeah, let's say that two is a child of node three. Well, yeah, and uh, and let's initially set the PV equal to AV, yeah, because this is like initial number you start from. Well, now if you are considering two numbers V and two. Well, if you perform first operation on two and then on v, so number in v uh, will be equal to uh, number in v plus maximum number you can get in a node. But sometimes this number can be negative. Well, if this number is negative, then it's optimal to perform operation on node V and only then on node 2. Well, which means that uh, the PV will be equal to maximum among these two things. This if you perform first on 2, then on V. And this if you perform operation first on V and then on 2. Well, then we can easily compute such uh, such DP. Well, if you didn't know such DP, then it's it is cool. You just learn something new. Well, we can do that recursively with DFS. So first of all, we uh, compute answer for for leaves, then for for their parents, and so on and so forth. And finally, we will know answer for each node. Well, if we compute everything correctly, so total answer will be just sum for each. Uh, for each node or for each position, like sum of all maximum numbers we can get for each position. Well, um, besides that, we also need to print ordering in which we will perform operations. Yeah, so it's not just sufficient just to print uh, maximum sum, we also need to print the ordering. Well, well, normally when, when you can put the P, you can also um, like maybe compute or save um, like ordering or answer or the way how you got optimal answer. Well, for for each node V and two, like for each pair of node V and two, we like uh, only only because of this DP, we we know which uh, node has to be used earlier or to which node uh, operation operation the operation has to be applied earlier well then let's for each node mark uh, like child that has to be um, applied earlier sorry later yeah let's mark them with red and uh, nodes that have to be applied earlier let's mark them with green yeah, and let's do that for every for every node. 
Well, now if we are starting from uh, from the root, we know, for example, that this not not have to be. Um, sorry. Yeah, so we know that this node has to be um, earlier in the order or in the answer. So then let's go to this node and solve regardless for this subtree. Yeah. So generally, from node V, we can go to all nodes that have to be earlier regardless uh, and try to solve for, for these nodes. Well, yeah, let's see. Let's say maybe we had another node that have to be earlier in the order. So, so request we go we go like to these nodes. Then we have nodes that have to be later than the current node. So then we add current node to the answer, and only then request we go to nodes that have to be later. Yeah. So. So by doing such algorithm, we can easily restore the answer. Uh, so we also need DFS here. Well, that's it actually. Mm. I hope that my explanation was quite uh, clear, but maybe if you still have some questions, yes, you can ask them below. Also, I hope you learned something new. Maybe. Probably was quite, uh, quite good, quite educational, and yeah, I hope you also like liked the video, mm. and if you really did, please uh, subscribe to the channel, press like button, and um, see you in the next video. Bye bye.